This is the final Breakfast with TT for 2022. And I am honored to be able to kick things off with the directors of the film 400 in African Epic, uh, which was the Ohio Humanities Award winner. We've partnered with Ohio Humanities this year for the first time. Uh, they wanted to get involved, support local Ohio storytellers. Um, so we, we had the opportunity to see a number of films from Ohio filmmakers. And 400 was the one that really, really just grabbed me right away in so many ways. It's about music. It's about the African experience here in this country. Um, I felt like when I met, or I felt in watching the film, I got to, to, to meet Mark Lomax, who is the subject of the film. He's an incredible musician, educator, just dynamic personality. Um, but then I had the opportunity to meet these two guys. And we walked around the city together, talked about our experiences both here, their experiences in Columbus. Um, I'm glad to have the chance to let them talk about some of their experiences here this morning. So let me welcome Jason and Charles, the directors of 400 and African Epic. And this conversation, again, this is, this is we, we have nothing to pitch, we have nothing to promote. This is just a chance to just really sit back and talk and, and you guys get to share what you wanna share. So I see, Jason, you got the mic. Yeah, I'm ready to pass it on too. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to. I want. I do want you to kick it off though. Tell us a little bit about yourself, about you, and you know what the what the project means to you. Um, it's too hard to talk about myself, but I'm willing to talk about Mark Lomax, who is um, the subject of the documentary that we did. And it's interesting. People are like, "Well, how did you find this story?" And it's like. Charles and I have always known Mark Lomax, and it, it's, it's about putting our efforts together to, to uplift him. And so uh, this project, it's interesting because it's just like Mark is our brother. We love him, and it was just, it was a passion project, and it, it came out beautifully. I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna pass it over to you. I don't, yeah. Um, I mean, oh. I will uh, big up ourselves and Mark and say that like this, this process for us was, you know, developing our skills and trying to understand, um, at least as a black person, our history and where we ended up and where we want to go in the future. And I think that with Dr. Mark Lomax, uh, we conveyed an amazing story. And uh, as phases our business, um, We've, we've grown and we wanna, we wanna make more stories and tell more stories about uh, insightful African-Americans and you know, other. Okay, all right. Well, we had the opportunity, like I said, when I met you guys, we walked through OTR together on our way over to the celebration for Ohio Storytelling. It's a party that we did you know, in honor of this film and I walked you guys through Cincinnati and we talked about, you know, sort of the history of this community and what, what, what it really meant for us to be doing this festival here. You guys have mentioned that, yeah, you all knew and kind of grew up around each other and around, you know, Dr. Lomax as well. Could you share some of that, of that part of your story, uh, how you guys met? The, you know, the community in Columbus, um, let's, let's do that switch. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what your stories are about, again, your Columbus community and, work, and meeting and working with them. So initially, I'll just say that me and Mark are from the same hood. Like we were from the same neighborhood, the Linden area. Um, I did not know him at that time, but we had a lot of overlapping uh, experience. This in, uh, in that way and um, to see him you know, reach the, the level that he's reached with his, his uh, education and uh, information that he's providing for um, the community uh, at large. Um, that, that's big to me. Um, how we came to know him, I'll let Jason kind of do his spiel because he does it the best. But um, before, we, we were just working on random projects and we ran into Mark 
And uh, we actually did a couple projects beforehand where we, he was utilized, right? Um, and then he just became a great friend, him, Eddie, Will, Dean, that's the quartet, right? Is that the right yep, word? Yep. Um, and we just kicked it. And we just shot this stuff, because I'm PCing myself. Um, we just talked about all the important things in life and talked about the best rap albums and stuff along those lines and just grew to become really good friends over the course of making the documentary. So, I mean, they were all invited to my wedding and I got married last year. So, <laughs> like they're important to me in that way. Well, yeah. Yeah, I met, um, I think growing up, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, blue collar, and music was such an important part of my life to get past things. And um, I remember seeing Mark at the uh, Columbus Jazz Festival and it was like at a three o'clock slot. And I'm watching him and Eddie play and I'm like, this is your headliner, and they're at three o'clock. This doesn't make any sense. But what I was doing was we were working on a uh, documentary about a jazz musician from here, from Cincinnati, Logan Rollins, who was locked up in the Ohio Penitentiary. And the Ohio State University Band had came and visited them, because this is 1970, so they would actually make an effort to come to the prison and sort of uh, just give them something else to think about. And there they met Logan Rollins, who is Sonny Rollins' nephew. And the Ohio State band director, Tom Battenberg, they were just blown away by this character in there. And so they came back and recorded an album. It's called the 511 uh, Penitential Jazz Album or something along, Jazz Ensemble, 511 Jazz Ensemble. But in order to understand, you know, I had found this story, but I, I, I'd seen Mark play, and I'm like, I'm gonna go ask that dude. And so Dr. Lomax, was working at the Boys and Girls Club before he was Dr. Lomax. And that, that just speaks to his, his truth, like that he's worked his way from the ground up. And so, man, we just, I sat in his office, his little office, while he's got his whistle on and leaning back. <laughs> and it was just, it was an instant connection. And so we just kept coming back to each other. So we'd worked on stuff. And I've, I've got other projects. So this isn't like our only project, but that knowing Mark, it's like we worked on the Logan Rollins things, and then, um, sorry if I'm rambling, but uh, these other projects, I mean, this was a project where we knew what Mark was doing, we knew how important it was. We couldn't get funding, so it was, I mean, he had a grant from Ohio State to write the music and put on the show, but we had no production value, and that's where Charles and I were like, you, ain't, you don't have to worry about that, we've got you. And, Again, knowing Dean and Will and Eddie, they just gave us everything. Yeah. And so it, it, it was a beautiful thing. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap things up with this. But as, as I move into this last part for the wrap up, what I'm hearing and what I'm hoping I'm hearing is this idea that you guys are really committed to telling Ohio stories. And that is incredibly important. So again, anything you want to say to you know let us know and reinforce that idea, speak speak to why that's so important. Close it out, Jason. Don't try to hang me, Joe. Well, we've got there's a community in Columbus, Ohio, Streetlight Guild, Scott Woods, Mark Lomax, uh, Richard Duart Brown. Those are just three, and it, they they cover every aspect. They cover poetry music and painting will do arts everything other than, I mean he's just on and on and on and then there's on and on characters and they're they're the upper echelon of artistry but there's no attention being brought to them there's nobody that we don't have the money to really represent and, and tell these stories and so Charles and I have committed ourselves with no funding to do this because it's that important so look up Streetlight Guild and you'll see how beautiful it is. And you talk to me about street light. I know we'll wrap it up, so I'm sorry, but. I will say ditto. Nothing else needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're selling it still short, but that's all right. I'm gonna, I wanna thank you guys again for being here this morning, for being here at the festival. Um, you know, I've told everyone, all the filmmakers every time, you know what, you're part of the OTR family now. 
We want to hear from you. We want to hear about your projects. We need to keep in touch. But again, thank you for coming and sharing this morning with us. Everyone, Charles and Jason from 400 for Epic and Epic. Thank you.